Kids today will never truly understand just how many fighting games were released in the 1990s. I could spend the next 10 minutes doing nothing more than listing off the dozens, if not hundreds, of one-on-one -on -one brawlers created in the wake of Street Fighter II's success, and that's just on the Neo Geo. Well, that might be slight hyperbole. The truth is that SNK was juggling a lot of fighting franchises at the time. In fact, the Neo Geo had so many fighters that you'll be forgiven if you've never even heard of Breakers, a series that was completely overshadowed by Samurai Showdown, The King of Fighters, World Heroes, Fatal Fury, The Last Blade, and a whole avalanche of more popular games. Now, nearly 30 years after introducing the world to Condor Heads and Lee Dao Long, Breakers is back in a brand new collection from Cubite Interactive that includes both the Neo Geo original as well as the 1998 sequel, Breakers Revenge. With online play and extra modes added in for good measure, this is easily Cubite's most ambitious retro collection yet. But is it any fun? Find out now when I review Breaker's Collection. Let me take you back to 1996. It's been five years since Street Fighter II first hit arcades and fighting games are going through something of a transition period. Arcades that were once lined with 2D games powered by pixel graphics are now filled with cabinets with weird names like Tekken, Virtua Fighter, and Soul Edge. With all eyes on the 3D landscape, you might think that this would be a terrible time to launch a 2D fighting game. And unless you're Capcom releasing a bunch of Street Fighter spin-offs and sequels, well, you'd be right. But hey, that didn't stop Visco from releasing Breakers, a modest Neo Geo fighting game that felt like a throwback to a simpler time, even in 1996. Now, if you've played a fighting game from the early 1990s, then you're going to feel right at home with Breakers. We get the usual assortment of colorful characters, including a young karate champ, a masked fencer from Italy, a Native American grappler named Condor, a female fighter famous for her kicks, and even an undead novelty character from ancient Egypt. What's interesting about this group is they don't actually go head-to-head -head with their clones like in other fighting games, but rather they go up against slightly different alter ego versions of the same characters. For example, Karate Champ Show will duke it out against Jin, while Red Geiger's is the palette-swapped version of Condor. That's a unique twist, even if the new characters are essentially just renamed clones. The gameplay is also familiar, especially for people who sharpened their teeth on Neo Geo staples like Fatal Fury and the King of Fighters. There are both light and hard punches and kicks, along with the typical quarter circle motions that throw fireballs, wind up spinning kicks, and so much more. There's also a super meter that can be charged up three times during a fight, allowing each character to perform several different extra powerful special moves, most of which are pulled off similar to what you saw in Super Street Fighter 2. This ends up being a big part of the fight strategy, and a well-placed super move can really change the momentum of the fight. Okay, look, I think it's fair to say the Breakers didn't set out to revolutionize the genre, but rather wanted to be a good, if not familiar, fighting game. And you know what? I'll give it that. Breakers is a good mid-90s fighter. The characters handle well, it has a fun cast, the special moves are easy to pull off, and the backgrounds are full of detail. Sure, it feels a lot like a clone and doesn't have the personality of something like Fatal Fury or World Heroes, but you know what? I found myself less critical all these decades later. Divorced from the context of what was happening in the industry in 1996, this is just a fun, old fighting game that is familiar enough to bring back a wave of nostalgia, but different enough to keep you engaged long after the good memories wear off. Now, on top of the original game, this collection also comes with Breaker's Revenge, the 1998 sequel that is somehow even more obscure than the original. This follow-up adds a cool new fighter named Saizo, who not only wields fire, but also seems to have control over the animal kingdom. He's joined by Huang Baihu, the end boss who's now playable in the sequel. Revenge also rebalances the roster, adds a few more moves, and polishes up the presentation, including completely redesigning the life bars for some reason. It's a cool update and makes some important changes, but it falls short of being the true sequel Breakers deserves. 
Thankfully, Cubite Interactive didn't fall short when it came to making this classic game collection. In a lot of ways, this is the company's most ambitious compilation yet, adding enough new bells and whistles to elevate it above the original releases. That's certainly the case when it comes to the online multiplayer mode, which is a lot more robust than I was expecting. Although this online mode is limited to Breaker's Revenge, it does offer both ranked and casual battles, along with a battle lobby and online replays that you can download and watch. Best of all, this compilation supports rollback netcode and crossplay between systems. It's so cool being able to connect with other fans around the world, something that would normally be reserved for bigger and more well-known fighting games. It's also worth mentioning that Cubite has given Breakers fans a brand new team battle mode where you can select a group of two different combatants, something that's reminiscent of the King of the Fighters series. While it's certainly not my favorite way to play the game, and it is a bit comical that you're asked to make a two-person team when there's only eight fighters, I really do love that there's more to do beyond the usual arcade and versus modes. The only downside is that you can't take these two-person teams online for some reason, and that's a bit disappointing. Now, there are a couple of other extras packed into the collection, but none of them are as big as the online multiplayer or the two-person team mode. There is a somewhat interesting text interview with producer Tetsuya Akiyama, who ends up going into how he started with the games industry and how Breakers came to be. It's brief, but it's definitely informative. Other extras include an art gallery and a sound test, something that we just didn't get in the original 1996 release. In a lot of ways, this is the best case scenario for a game like Breakers. Let me tell you, it would have been so much easier to simply port the games and just stop there. But Cubite has taken a lesser known fighting series and given it the all-star treatment. I can't imagine a single fan of these cult classics being disappointed, and the fact that you can connect with other players around the world should make this reasonably priced compilation a must-buy for anybody who's into old-school fighters. Breakers may not be my favorite Neo Geo brawler, but a package this good is hard to pass up. While not as well known as Fatal Fury or The King of Fighters, this brand new compilation from Cubite Interactive makes a strong case that Breakers and its 1998 sequel Breakers Revenge were Neo Geo fighting games worth remembering. Featuring both arcade releases, Breakers Collection improves on the original 1990s games by adding online multiplayer support, team battle modes, and all kinds of other extras. Not bad for a couple of games that have been criticized for being overly derivative and a bit on the shallow side. No matter if you're a longtime fan of the series or just have nostalgia for 1990s fighting games, Breakers Collection delivers where it counts and is a compilation that's worth checking out. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is your favorite lesser-known fighting game? Since we're talking about Neo Geo titles, I might as well shout out one of my favorites, which is Waku Waku 7 from Sunsoft. Man, I love the cartoony style and how over-the-top it was. We need more games just like that. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back next week with brand new reviews, plus a recap of some of the games that I missed in late 2022. While you wait for that, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.